it's me, Alex, and we're here today on Okonoshima! I don't know how my camera is going to go in the rain, so I'm just filming on my phone because supposedly iPhones meant to be water resistant. So if I still have a phone by the end of this day, then we're doing all right. One of my favorite things about big Japanese cities is that there's a lot of underground walkways, particularly going to the station. So we're basically able to walk all the way from the hotel to the station underground. And along the way, there's all sorts of shops. There'll be a Starbucks and there's, you know, clothing stores and knickknacks and souvenirs and they're just everywhere under every city. It's amazing. Dan and I decided to stay in Hiroshima overnight because it's the closest major city to the island. You have to go from Hiroshima to Mihara, and then Mihara to Tadano Umi, and then you have to get a ferry from Tadano Umi across to the island. So, to get from Hiroshima to Mihara, you take the Tokairo Sanyo Shinkansen. It takes 26 minutes and it costs about 35 US dollars, but if you have a JR pass, then the cost is covered by the pass. If you can't afford that, then you can also get the JR Sanyo line, which is $15, but it does take an hour and 15 minutes each way. If you're planning on doing a lot of travel across Japan, I highly recommend the JR Pass. It does cost about $300 for a seven day pass, but it's totally worth it because some Shinkansen tickets are $100 each, and that's each way. So you save a lot of money with JR Pass. Mihara, Mihara when you get off the Shinkansen at Mihara Station, you'll have to exit the Shinkansen gates to be able to access the regular platforms. You feel a bit like a celebrity using the JR Pass because you just flash it at the guards and they let you straight through. So the train to Tadano Umi Station leaves from Platform 1. You'll see this sign here covered in bunnies, so you know that it's the right one. It's the Kude Line bound for Takahara and Kude. This local train is timed with the Shinkansen, so that when the Shinkansen arrives, there should be a local train to the Rabbit Island waiting for you, and it should leave within about 15 minutes of when the Shinkansen arrives. Don't miss it though, because it only comes once every hour. If you do happen to miss it, there's a fair bit to do in Mihara. There's a lot of really, really nice restaurants, and that's what Dan and I had to do a couple of years ago. But it's better to spend your time at the Rabbit Island, so try not to miss the second train. directly outside the station and you can go there to buy some cabbage and various vegetables for the bunnies so it's it's directly next to the station so you don't have to go far the ferry is back the other way but it leaves every 15 minutes so you don't have to race the rabbit food is one dollar and the cabbage is a dollar the carrot is two dollars and you can get a set for five dollars which has two lots of rabbit food two lots of cabbage and one bucket of carrot I just put in Tadano Umi Station to Tadano Umi Port and this is the station here and you saw me just come out and that was the family mart where you buy the food. So if you come out of the station you can either turn left to buy the food or you can turn right and you just walk all the way along and you'll see signs along the road but then you just turn right. It's very very simple, it's a four minute walk and then you're at the port. When you get to the port, you'll spot this little shop. It's really hard to miss. It's a beautiful looking shop. They've recently renovated it. It looks really cute. It's got a sign out the front that says Rabbit Island Tickets. You go up to the vending machine, you put in a 1,000 yen note, you hit the button, it'll give you a return ticket. Simple as that. The first ferry leaves Tadano Umi port at 7.40 a.m. There's another one at 8.30, then there's one at 8.40, then there's one at 9.40, 10.25, 10.50, 12.00 p.m., 2.05 p.m., 3.00 p.m., 3.15 p.m., 
4 p.m. and 4.25 p.m. And that's the last one. So you can probably see that it's not a very regular ferry timetable. The ferry ride takes exactly 35 minutes from the mainland to the island, and it's a really, really beautiful ride. The tickets were pretty cheap, they're about three or four dollars each way. It's really warm inside and I get a little bit seasick, so I find it much better to sit outside and enjoy the view. You can also bring your car onto the ferry, so if you rent a car while you're in Japan then you can drive on the island, but I don't really see the point in doing that because you're going to miss everything if you're driving around. It's a really small island and it's really really easy to just walk around the whole thing. It would only take a few hours to see the entire island. You ever see that movie, The Mist? That's, that's what this feels like. I feel like there's gonna be demon rabbits everywhere. My heart will go on and on. There it is. This is Okonoshima. We're here. It only took five minutes. But I feel like we could have swum if the worst came to us. <laughs> so last time we came, it, it was an overcast day, but it wasn't raining, so we climbed up to the top of that mountain up there. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that today. <laughs> You're not missing out on much, there's just a bunch of trees and not as many rabbits as there are down on the ground. You're going to arrive at the ferry port. And just remember where this is, because if you happen to be running late for your ferry back home and it's the last ferry of the day, you'll end up stuck. So just try and remember where the port is. There's heaps of bunnies here waiting to greet you, but definitely remember there's a whole bunch of them around the hotel. That's where the majority of the bunnies are. And this little shuttle bus here will take you straight to the hotel, and it's very regular. Dan left his umbrella on the ferry. Alex left it. I didn't leave it. <laughs> You left it. We're each responsible for our own umbrellas. Says the girl that said, oh, yeah, I'll take this and then walks off. I don't know what he's talking about. So, when you first get off the ferry, there are bunnies and they're right here in front of you. But don't be fooled. You may be tempted to just stay here the entire day with the bunnies that are here. Alex always is. I'm always tempted to do that, but there's more. I promise you there's more. Almost all the rabbits on the island are tame and they'll approach any humans that offer them cabbage. Some of them might be a little bit more timid than others, but if you do have some treats, they'll warm up to you eventually. Like I said before, it's very tempting to hang around the ferry terminal because these bunnies are extremely friendly. I think I spent an hour here the first time we came, but not this time. I'm woke to their tricks. So we hurried along and followed the road towards the hotel. There's a few do's and don'ts that you'll need to know before you head to the island, so I'll put the link to their website in the description box below. But the main thing is rule number one, which is don't pick up the rabbits or chase them. As friendly as they are, and yes they might climb all over you, rabbits don't like to be picked up and they could possibly hurt themselves struggling to try and get away from you. So just pat them on the ground and let them climb on top of you when they're ready to do that. Don't leave any leftover rabbit food behind either because they don't want to eat dampened pellets or rotten vegetables. And also those can attract crows and the crows can bother the rabbits. And also don't feed them any human food. You'll find a lot of baby rabbits around this spot and I have a theory because the adult rabbits probably know that the tourists are guaranteed to feed them here so they raise their young in this spot. I mean that's just a theory. I'm not really entirely sure how bunny minds work, whether they work in such complicated ways, but <laughs> just, a, just a guess. You might be very tempted to feed the rabbits along the road as you're walking, but about halfway along this road you'll find a sign that specifically says do not feed the rabbits on the road. I suppose it's because they want the rabbits to stay away because they don't want squished bunnies. So don't make the same mistake I did and be tempted to feed them when they're running alongside you giving you cute faces. Don't be greedy. Oh, oh crap. Don't feed on the roadside. Ooh. The walk from the ferry terminal to the hotel should only take you about five to ten minutes, just depending on how many times you want to stop and take photos or how long you want to stuff around for. Is that your bunny dance? I can't believe I'm going to marry this man. 
Wow, look at the water. Australian beaches are quaking. Sorry, roadside bunnies. You ain't gonna get any food by sitting there. Oh no, there's a fork in the road. Where do we go? I don't remember. Oh, bus goes right. So people go left. What are you doing? Why are you just sitting there? Look how round he is. Oh my God. <gasps> uh, oh yes, you can have some food. <laughs> It's what a sweet little thing. You're so wet. Okay, that's all you get. Please, sir, can I have some more? Thanks, bunny friend. Well, it's coming down pretty hard now with the rain, so I think it's time we... Oh, time to lose an eyeball because of Daniel's umbrella opening skills. <laughs> what a nice view. Oh, look. There's a little house. Oh, look at them all. Oh, a little teeny tiny one. Oh, two tiny ones. <coughs> Hello. <gasps> you standing up? Yes. Yeah, have a little bit. Goodbye. Daniel, hold on really tight because they're good at stealing. <laughs> That's something new. I didn't know you could do that. And also this bridge is new too. This pedestrian walkway. This was never here when we were last here. So basically you just follow the walkway until you get over there. And then you go past there to the hotel. And then there's more bunnies. So there's a lot of places to sit. And it seems as though no matter where you sit, there's bunnies everywhere. So if we just sit here for a minute, they might start appearing. Can I tempt you, friends? Can I, oop, oh, I can tempt him. Come on, friend, up, yes. No, you can't have the whole thing. You can have a little bit. Just a bit. Don't be so aggressive. Mate, relax. What about your friends over there? Hello. Oh, we are one. We are kindred spirits, orange bunny. <laughs> oh, yes, hello. Do you want some of this action? Triple bun. <laughs> What's that? Menage a trois? <laughs> what about that one? Are you okay? Get, get out of the way. Hello? Friend? Do you like some cabbage? I think it's a wet. Not you. I said not you. Mate, what part of not you don't you understand? Get away. Shoot. No. We have a big island to explore and not much cabbage, so uh, I don't know how. We work. can get more. I'm sure we can get more. Cabbage thieves. <laughs> look at him. Look. Look how round he is. Look. You're missing it. You're missing it. Look. I'm so round. Daniel. Oh, he, he missed it. He unrounded himself. It's pretty round for me. Hey, friend. Why don't you do that nice trick again? Yes. Good job. Well, I don't know how we pulled this one off, but somehow we're at the top of the mountain. No, we're not. Almost. I think you got 80 meters up that way. Yeah, we, we were walking and we weren't quite sure where we were going because I got really distracted filming a particular rabbit and I just kind of followed it. And then all of a sudden we just ended up in a place and we were like, wait, where are we? And then there were stairs, so we took the stairs and now we're up here and there's no bunnies. I lied, there's bunnies, I found bunnies. Multiple bunnies. Hello. Hi. I have to save the last little bit of cabbage and it's not for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. oh, excuse me. Coming through. That tiny 
tiny little bunny was just in that little nest over there, but I didn't get it on camera. Hey man, look, he's staring us down. It's like, you got some cabbage. You kids want to buy some cabbage? I have one small piece of cabbage left and it's just the right size for that bunny. Hey mate, Usagi. He's thinking about it. Oh, <laughs> no hesitation. But Yon, wow, look at him. Oh, what are you waiting there for? The cabbage is here. Oh, don't, don't try and steal it. Why are they all so rude? <laughs> wet. Look, his little friend can't be tempted, he's just watching. Okay, that's that's all you get because that's all the cabbage I have left for this entire island, friend. No, don't be greedy. No, I don't care that you can stand up. That's a great trick, but I don't care. Nice view. What a nice life these rabbits have. They just sit on the edge of the cliff and just stare out at the ocean. Oh, that was a close one. He almost stole the whole thing. Look at you. Hello. Oh, what a sweet little face you have. They're so eager. Nope, you don't. Okay, right. On a diet, are we? Okay, that's enough. You guys have had enough. We were. Where were we? We were there by accident, so we just did all of this, and now we've got here. <laughs> and there's the hotel. So there's that little blue bus that you saw before. It's so well made. So, up oh, bunnies! Hello! Oh my god, look, they, they run from everywhere. Look, more. And look, look at that one. They literally come from everywhere. Look at those ones. They're like, humans! Humans! <laughs> Hello. Wow, look at that. That one is so majestic. I like your hair, friend. Maybe he's a hare. <laughs> Round boy. Not to be confused with a green boy. The green boy. Oh, watch out, that's, that's a big old puddle. Look at him. Okay, well last time we were here, there were so many rabbits on this strip of road that you couldn't even move. But now they all seem to be hiding from the weather. So, do you want to just go into the shop up there and see if we can get some food? Yeah, sure. Here we go. This is the Hyokumura Okunoshima. This is the hotel. So, if you stay here overnight, you can see the bunnies in the early morning and in the late evening, and that's when they're out the most. Most active. Most active. Spotted, seen. Oh, there's some bunnies inside those, inside the bicycle area. They're not really interested in food right now, are they? More interested in just sitting and not doing anything. They can sense we don't have any food. The food at this little cafe is really nice. They're open from 7.30 in the morning until nine o'clock at night. So basically no matter what time you come to the island, you can grab a bite to eat. You can get curry rice, or you can just get some plain cakes or udon noodles. You can even get burgers and stuff on the weekend. They've got takoyaki, curry rice, noodles. And then there's this little store attached to it and they sell the most adorable rabbit souvenirs. I really, really wanted one of these little bunny purses. They were just the tiniest bit out of my price range. They're $17 and I actually have a Totoro one. <laughs> These are chopstick holders and they're really cheap. They're only a dollar or so. 
And there were a whole bunch of cute rabbit toys as well. Rabbit bags, a rabbit bucket hat, which was very tempting. And last time I was here, I bought one of these bunnies. I got a little pink one. It's very dirty now because I've carried it around for so many years, but I was very tempted to get another one, but I didn't. So this is the vending machine. There's an English menu and it corresponds to the numbers on the buttons. So you just press whichever one you want and then you get a ticket and then the ticket goes to the lady at the counter and then they'll prepare the food for you. And while you're waiting for your food and while you're eating your food, you can just sit and look at all the bunnies. So I always get iced coffee when I'm in Japan. I just really like Japanese iced coffee. I don't necessarily like the hot coffee. I don't think it tastes very nice. Dan ended up getting a tea, Oishi. which was scorching hot. It, it was so hot to the point that we decided to put some emergency ice cubes in it. And don't mind us, we're a very, very weird couple, I'm telling you now. <laughs> One of the things I love about Japan is just because they can rip you off doesn't mean that they will. That was a big enough meal for, for two people and had we been in Australia on an island that was a big tourist attraction, that probably would have cost $30 plus a blood sacrifice plus your firstborn child and your hopes and dreams of ever having a house deposit. <laughs> That's what, what it would have cost. <laughs> what hopes? There is no hope. That was only about $10 enough for both of us and it was really really nice too. This rabbit has literally fallen asleep chewing on a piece of cabbage. That's how well fed these rabbits outside the hotel are. He's just got the cabbage in his mouth and he's just having a snooze. Darkness, my old friend. I love how they come running. They spot you and they're like, hey, 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 you got any food? Hi. You want to give him some food? He came all the way here. We can't disappoint him. Uh oh, here comes another one. Hello. Oop, and a third one. Well, ain't that the spookiest looking thing you've ever seen in your life? Ship. Ghost ship? That is so spooky. That's amazing. Tell me this doesn't look like a scene straight out of a horror movie. Like the spooky tower up on the hill, the old abandoned tennis court with the creepy as heck chair. <laughs> There's crows cawing in the background. Now there's this bird tweeting. I'm just going to read you some Wikipedia facts about the island so you can understand some of its history. So the island played a key role during World War II as a poison gas factory. Here's a spooky fact. In 1925, the Imperial Japanese Army initiated a secret program to develop chemical weapons based on research showing that they were being produced in the United States and in Europe. Japan was a signatory on the 1925 Geneva Protocol which is a treaty prohibiting the use of chemical and biological weapons in international armed conflicts. Although the development and storage of chemical weapons wasn't banned, Japan went to great lengths to ensure the secrecy of construction of the chemical munitions plant that began in 1929. With the end of the war, documents concerning the plant were burned, and the Allied occupation forces disposed of the gas either by dumping, burning or burying it, and people were told to be silent about the project. 
There's been speculation that the rabbits on the island may have been the same rabbits that were used in the chemical munitions plant to test the effectiveness of the chemical weapons, but apparently these rabbits were intentionally let loose on the island after it was turned into a park after World War II. Apparently the original rabbits that were used for testing were killed when the factory was demolished, and apparently they're not related to the rabbits currently on the island. Dan, you look like Chris Pratt in Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh, that's a... That's a very small rabbit. That's a baby bite. Look at him compared to my foot. Look! Dan, look! That is so special. It's raining. Well, these shoes from my runway haul are holding up pretty well. So that's a good sign. Seeking shelter. <laughs> Hello, friends. You've got, You've got to, to go, go dig those holes. It's a big old bun with a tiny nose. Souls. How do you get here? No one knows. knows. You to go dig those holes. <laughs> You're strange. <laughs> yeah. Just head to Google Maps and type in Tarano Umi Port to set your directions to say starting point as Okonoshima. And then if you click on Schedule Explorer, you can see the timetable. So it looks like at the moment the last ferry of the day is 6.57pm, but that can change, so make sure you always check. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Rabbit Island, I know we did. Even though it's wet and cold and miserable, it's not that miserable because look at all the bunnies! So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!